Hey guys, Angry Monkey here. And Jackson Farrell from Hot Pile of Garbage. And we're playing some more 999, and we made it back out into the big hospital room. So Ace is kind of like, oh, okay, I kind of look stupid. I, I was going to sacrifice myself, and here you are just a little bit later. Yep. So um, they were going to move on, and Clover says, hey, what about door three? Um, Snake could be behind door three. And so they're like, yeah, we should probably check door three. So... Clover, Ace, and Seven are going to go check on door three, and the rest of us are just going to hang out in the hospital room until they get back. So so we are. So, unfortunately, no puzzle solving for door three. Aw. That's okay. They get to have all the fun. Yeah. Yeah, they get to do all the um, hitting the reds and deads and Picking potentially up stuff blowing and up. And moving body parts around yeah. between mannequins or something comparable. <laughs> so, after exactly nine seconds, the door closed noisily. We should get moving, too! Huh? Get moving? Where are we going? Everyone except Lotus seemed rather confused. I guess we're not hanging out in the hospital room. Well, it would be a waste of time to just sit around, wouldn't it? Good point, Lotus. Let me explain. <laughs> you gotta make sure that you keep the Lotus voice going. I get it. Okay, never mind. <laughs> we're gonna see if we can get anywhere interesting with the Jupiter key. Yes! If we're lucky... We might find Snake! So they were at the end of the hallway lined by individual hospital rooms. The Jupiter symbol was engraved on the keyhole. Alright, Junpei! Open it if you please! Yeah, on it! Junpei pulled the Jupiter key out of his pocket and slid it into the keyhole. He twisted. With a noise sharp click, he felt noise. the door... Noise! Noise! <laughs> With a noise sharp click, he felt the door unlock. Alright, ready guys? Junpei's companions nodded. He nodded back, then slowly and quietly opened the door. What have we here? Staircase. Inside was exactly what he'd expected to see from the map of the ship's interior. I don't trust stairs, they're always up to something. <laughs> I read that on Facebook the other day. <laughs> they were in a tremendous hall, almost like a ballroom, with massive central staircase. We've already seen all this. Why are you describing this? Great. Back to the beginning. We're making a stare at it. <laughs> Not as good as the up to something thing, but you go with what you got. Uh, I'm down with it. <laughs> you sure this is a good idea? What do you mean? Well, we already searched every inch of this room, didn't we? I'm asking you if there's any reason we came back here, man. Of course there's a reason. It was the next step. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, get ready for stair puns, guys. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I don't want to high right now. <laughs> um, let's hope Jinpei can think of a reason, because I can't. <laughs> man, sometimes I can't tell if you're smart or just lucky. Uh. This. Junpei pulled two things out of his pockets. The Saturn key card. And the, the Earth key. Santa cocked his head to one side like an inquisitive bird and looked at them. Santa bird. Yeah. After several long moments, during which it became apparent that Santa had no idea what the cards meant, June took pity on him. Don't you remember, Santa? On sea deck where we are now, there was a big elevator behind the stairs, remember? And next to the elevator, there was a card reader with the Saturn symbol on it. And on a deck, on the door to the left, there was a keyhole with the Earth symbol on it, I think. So the two keys that Jumpy has should let us use the elevator and the door on a deck, huh? Yes. That's right. June smiled, pleased with herself. Mm, I'm so good. So did Santa. All right, I got it, man. Let's get started, then. What do you say we split into two teams? Lotus and I will search the Earth one, so you two can search Saturn, all right? Gonna go high and be on Saturn. <laughs> Sounds good. Junpei handed the Earth key to Santa. They decided that their initial search should be brief, only ten minutes. 
They'd meet back near the staircase once they were done. Junpei and Jun headed for the elevators. Sure enough, there was a card reader bolted to the wall next to the left elevator. Oh, so we're, we're taking the Saturn and they're taking the Earth? Yeah. That sounds fitting, because June is not exactly what I'd describe as down-to-earth. <laughs> Although, I don't know if Santa really is either. <laughs> or at least my, my version of Santa. <laughs> he lined the Saturn key card and swiped it through the reader. A light on the upper left corner blinked to life. Great. Looks like it's working now. All right. Now, now how do I call the elevator? There was a single button to the right of the elevator door. On the button was the upside-down triangle, the universal symbol for down. Elevators sure do have their ups and downs. Yes, they do. There didn't appear to be an up button. Okay, I guess this one's just... <laughs> it I doesn't guess... have its ups. Yeah, just all down from there. Yep. <laughs> Junpei pushed it. He didn't have much of a choice. Oh, ding, yay, it opened. Yay. Okay. It opened. Look, Jumpy. June's voice was excited, but Jupe could hear a tinge of anxiety. Sweet, it opened. Let's get going. He grinned at June and stepped toward the open door. As he was about to set foot in it, he felt a hand on his arm. Oh, wait. What? Um, not really. I just, oh, gosh. Junpei was something of a loss. What could she possibly be so frightened of? I'm feeling that needle on the sanity meter wavering. <laughs> June was probably afraid of... Oh, and now I've got to guess it to stabilize the needle. Um... Okay, mm. one of these is absolutely hilarious. Uh-huh. Is, is it the being locked up alone with yeah. the boy? Should I pick it for the lulls? Yes. Okay. <laughs> After a little thought, Junpei decided that she had to be nervous about being locked in such a small place alone with a boy. In a way, it was kind of cute. Very demure, you could say, he thought. Still, even though it wasn't exactly roomy in the elevator, they weren't going to be pressed up against one another. At least they didn't have to be. Still, it was making her nervous. Junpei couldn't help it, but think how innocent she was. Come on, let's go. Again, he stepped toward the elevator. And again, he felt himself restrained. I said, wait a minute. Why? Aren't you afraid, Jumpy? Afraid of what? Well, I have never, you know... she never been in an elevator with a man alone before? Even so, she still seemed awfully alarmed. I might get wet. What? What? Down there, I get soaking wet. Oh, well, I mean, of course you would. That's the way it works. I mean, I've never heard of anywhere anyone getting soaking wet anywhere, some, somewhere else. That, that's true. Uh, you, you don't mind? Mind what? Getting wet. Well, I don't know. I think I'd probably, you know, like it. Gosh, Jumpy, you're so brave! <laughs> really? I mean, I kind of think any guy would do the same thing, you know? What happens, happens, right? If you get the chance, you just gotta go for it. That's what a man's supposed to do, I guess. <laughs> Love in an elevator! Good one. Thank you. You're so cool, Jumpy. I really admire you and that Aerosmith reference. Uh, that doesn't really seem like the sort of thing you ought to admire someone for. I'm really scared. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you said, you've never done it before. Yes, so I don't think I'd be able to last very long, and then it'll be over. <laughs> it just keeps going. <laughs> oh, over? Yes, I'll go to heaven. Heaven? It feels... Kind of like you're floating in space, <laughs> and your mind gets all fuzzy like when you pass out. <laughs> or at least that's what I've heard from people who have experienced it. Ah, yes, I've heard that too. Although I don't think the same thing happens to guys. What? 
Huh? But it would happen to Mint, wouldn't it? It would happen to anyone. Once you get into your body, the same thing happens to everyone. Well, I mean, usually it doesn't go inside the man. I mean, generally. Yeah, yes, it does. Well, eventually, well, it's not like you really have a choice. Yeah! <laughs> your body will force you to swallow some of it eventually. <laughs> well, what are you trying to do to me? <laughs> Nothing. I'm not going to do anything to you. I'm just saying that that's what happens. It's a psycho psychological reaction to what you're experiencing. What? Is that really how it happened? It occurred to Junpei that perhaps that was how it worked. Man! When my parents gave me the talk, they got it all wrong. Perhaps he'd been mistaken all these years. <laughs> he had misunderstood life. How had he misunderstood life so gravely? The thought terrified him. June seemed to be entirely oblivious to Junpei's mounting confusion and terror. I know most men probably have larger lungs, but even then, I don't think you could hold your breath for 20 or even 10 minutes. Eventually, you'd have to breathe, and then the water would get into your lungs. Once that happens, your body won't be able to get oxygen anymore, and you'll start to feel that floaty feeling as you pass out. Uh... Um... Um... um. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, Junpei understood. He understood what Jun was trying to say and why she was so scared. Yeah, you're right. You wouldn't last very long. See? She was afraid that the only elevator button pointed down. That meant, of course, that the elevator couldn't go any higher than the floor they were on. As he thought about it, Jupe realized he hadn't seen elevators on the A or B decks near the central staircase, all of which meant that the elevator could only convey them to the lower decks. And the floor below them they were on D deck should be completely submerged. That meant... Hey, wait a minute. This elevator came up from somewhere under us, right? Um, well, yeah, so I guess it did. It didn't open right away after you pressed the button. There was a motor noise like it was moving and then it opened. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So take a look inside. Junpei jerked his head toward the interior of the elevator. It's not wet at all, is it? The walls and even the floor are totally dry. Oh, you're right, they are. She looked around the elevator, slightly embarrassed. Well, let's test it. Test it? Yeah, watch this. Junpei put one foot in the elevator and bent around the corner of the door until he could find until he could see the floor buttons. There were only two, E and C. He pushed the E button and jumped out of the elevator. The door slid shut, smashing his arm and pulling him <laughs> down with it, and they heard the grinding of the motor as the elevator car moved down. That didn't really happen. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> well, hey, I mean, if it's your left arm, then you wouldn't have to worry about the detonator anymore. True. Oh, because if it takes off... Well, would, would that trigger the bomb or not? I don't know. I mean, I know if you try to take off the bracelet itself, that would trigger the bomb, but I don't know what would happen if you take your arm off. Hmm. Not saying I recommend doing that, because, I mean, does theoretically... It, does the bracelet monitor your vital signs? Yeah, because if your heart rate reaches zero, then the bracelet comes off. Oh. So, but again, I don't recommend doing that, because theoretically you should be able to get off the ship in nine hours, and then it'd yep. come off anyway. So. And also, apparently, they don't let you, so yeah. so much the better. <laughs> okay, so after a few moments, they heard the sound of the elevator door grinding open several floors below. Jupe nodded to June and pressed the elevator button again. A few moments later, the elevator returned. Too bad I can't do a really good French voice, and I can do the narrator from SpongeBob. A few moments later. Ah, uh, yes. More like <laughs> Jacques Cousteau or something. Yeah. The door. Very fitting if we're about to go diving. Oh, yeah. But I'll just go with my normal voice. I'm not going to try to... I, I'm, I have such a terrible French voice that it's not even a French voice. It's just... Anyway, the door slid open, and just as Junpei had expected, there was no water to be found. See? Junpei couldn't resist puffing out his cheeks just a little. Chest. Chest, sorry. <laughs> June, however, still looked confused. Oh, what does that mean? 
How can the E-Deck be safe if the D-Deck is full of water? Well, here's what I think. The elevator shaft and E-Deck must be watertight and separated from wherever the ship's been punctured. Here, let me show you. Hold all his notebook and pen <coughs> and sketched out a rough illustration. You hear the squeaking markers and yep. stuff. I see. This really reminds me of um, in Bleach. Bleach. I knew you were going to bring that up. <laughs> I haven't seen any Bleach. You I just, haven't? I just know about. Oh, that, that part is so hilarious because Rookie is always showing Ichigo the drawing. See, this is how it happens. And Ichigo's like, are your drawings always that bad? <laughs> just like not even understanding at all what she's saying. He's just like, wow, those are terrible drawings. <laughs> well, they get the point across yeah. here. I see, so... Whoops, sorry. Skip me, but the shape of this... of the inside keeps it all from filling with water. Yeah, I think that's what's going on. Junpei continued talking as he closed the notebook and slipped it back into his pocket. So, I'm gonna go down and check it out. You stay here, alright? Um, but... Come on, just do it, alright? He gave Jun's shoulder a reassuring squeeze and hopped onto the elevator. So much for living it up when we're going down. <laughs> he pushed the E button and the door began to close. June looked worried, her eyes darting back and forth as she was trying to make a decision, when suddenly... I'm coming with you! Huh? At the last possible moment, June dashed forward, turning sideways just in time to slip through the gap between the closing doors. Junpei jammed his finger against the open button, but it was too late. The door had shut. He and June were in the elevator and was heading down to E-Deck. That sly vixen. <laughs> he was so surprised by June that he didn't even have the time to think about what awaited him on the E-Deck. The elevator stopped and the door slid open. They stepped off onto the floor outside the elevator. Nothing seemed especially unusual. No fish going about their fishy business or jellyfish floating lazily through the water. There was, however, a blowfish, or at least something that looked very much like one. June's cheeks were puffed out and her mouth a tiny, intense frown. <laughs> oh, knock it off. It's just like I thought. This part hasn't flooded. Come on, just look around. There's no water here. June looked around nervously, then... <gasps> Exhaled. You're right. It's not flooding at all. See? But there's a whole lot of water. Yeah, right on top of us. What's going to happen if the ceiling breaks? Jimpy thought about that for a moment. Well, we'd probably get really wet up there. Huh? At any rate, we should probably go back as soon as we can, once we're done looking around down here. Lotus and Santa might already be back. Okay. Good idea. Junpei glanced around at the room they'd found themselves in. The first thing he noticed was a set of thick iron bars. They ran the length of the room, separating the left elevator from the right one. Well, we can't go over there. Right. Then and perhaps... In the corner of the room that housed the elevators, Junpei found an opening. He walked up to it and stuck his head around the corner. A long, straight hallway stretched out in front of him. A door at the end of the hallway! There's something written on it! Yeah, let's go have a look. Even though we can clearly see it from here, but... What Jim could that thing on the door be? Yeah, what does that, what does that mean? So, anyway, before long, they found themselves in front of the door. On it was a number written in bright red paint. Six. I knew it. I knew that it was a six from all the way down there. <laughs> That's another door. And indeed, there was a red bolted to the wall right next to the door. Of course, with only two people, there wasn't much they could do with it. All right, let's head back. Yes. Junpei and June turned and headed back to Sea Deck. On their way back, Junpei noticed a map on the wall. As it turned out, it was a burnt map of the ship's interior for E-Deck. Dot, 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 dot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah. Oh. Huh. Close enough. So, you guys found door one. They met back up with Santa and Lotus, who had explained what they'd found. 
Apparently, there was another numbered door on A deck, just like the one on E deck, beyond the door that the Earth Key opened. According to Santa and Lotus, there was a one on the door. All told, they had discovered two new doors, the six door and the one door. It is interesting that the E deck wasn't flooded. Lotus was quiet for a moment, lost in thought. And everyone was relieved. <laughs> well, we don't really know if all of E-Deck is safe. We only check the area around the elevator. Even so, it's still very interesting. You said the six door was there, right? Yes. Then that means Zero planned all this out, even the sinking. That would have meant pretty serious remodeling of the ship's interior, man. It's pretty mind-blowing when you think about it. Yeah. I wonder how long it took. I can't even imagine how much it would have cost. It would have been a ton, that's for sure, man. Well, that does go along with what Ace was saying. The most reasonable explanation would be that this was done by some organization with access to a whole lot of cash. Yes, it does make sense. That thought made them all go quiet for a moment. June bit her lip while Lotus sighed softly to herself, and Santa cracked a stiff neck and stared off into the distance at nothing. Whoa, man. <laughs> Look at that. Um, I don't think it's a good idea to stay here. June looked up at Junpei with large, pleading eyes. Yeah, you're right. Ace and his team might be back already. Well, June, Junpei and I should be able to open door number one. Huh? You guys are leaving me behind? Okay, so we got math, 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 and that equals one. Door number one. Just kidding. All right, let's go. Into the next episode. Yes. Yeah. So, hopefully in the next episode, we'll find what we were hoping to find in this episode, but maybe yeah. maybe the next episode we'll, we'll get some news from Ace's team. But we'll find out all that in the next episode. Yeah, see you then. Yep, goodbye.